Austin, Texas. I'll be in Austin, Texas this Friday and Saturday. Vulcan Gas Company. Two shows each night. Come out. Yeehaw. Bring your cowboy hats and your beer bottles and your friends from all walks of life. No judgment. If you got a mouth and a face, <laughs> come to the show. Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas. Two shows each night, Friday, Saturday, the 22nd and 23rd of April. And the next weekend, Comedy on State, Madison, Wisconsin, April 28th through the 30th. Please come out. First time there, Comedy on State, Madison, Wisconsin, April 28th through the 30th. Right after that, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just around the bend. Milwaukee Improv, May 1st, one night only. Come out and see me. All these tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. May 5th through the 7th, Raleigh, North Carolina. Bring your dad, bring your kids if they're of age. Rally North Carolina at the Improv May 5th through the 7th. May 13th through the 15th, Atlanta, Georgia at the Punchline. And right before that, May 12th in Augusta, Georgia, doing a one-nighter. All this ticket info at AdamRayComedy.com. So many cities after that. Kentucky, Denver, San Diego, Vegas, Seattle, um, Kansas City, Arizona. We're hitting them all. Pittsburgh. All the tickets, adamraycomedy.com. Young Rock, Tuesdays, NBC, check it out. Pam and Tommy on Hulu, check it out. Gaslit premieres Sunday, April 24th on Stars. Sean Penn, Julia Roberts, and your boy, Gaslit. It's about Watergate. Stars, April 24th, check it out. Podcast, ALN Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Adam Ray Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. Of course, Today is also a very exciting day because, ooh, Adam Ray live from the Punchline in San Fran drops on my YouTube channel. So go check that out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Adam Ray Comedy. A new special from your boy live at the Punchline. We shot it with like eight cameras. I can't wait for you to see it. It's just a nice little fun 36-minute piece of fucking giddy up. So go get it. Enjoy it. And enjoy today's special episode. Holy shit, I got in full Dr. Phil prosthetic to interview one of my favorites, Jonathan Kite. Um, we did a Dr. Phil celebrity therapy, and it's madness, bonkers, all the good stuff that you love if you love the podcast. So if you like fun and you like to laugh, get ready, grab a coffee, grab a donut, grab some tequila, grab some Adam Ray merch at AdamRayComedy.com. We've got new Pickles hoodies, my dog Pickles smoking a joint, saying taught myself to shimmy. We'll be hitting the merch site soon. But all that merch is at AdamRayComedy.com where you can get all things Adam Ray. Enjoy this special episode. Be good to yourselves. And uh, and we'll see you on the road, baby. Enjoy it. Brand new episode of the About Last Night podcast coming at you right now with Jonathan Kite and Dr. Phil. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. It's, uh, it's from the movie Teen Wolf. <laughs> And, and I and I would say that Bobby Finstock was the coach, and and, and Boof and and Styles. You know, sometimes I just name the characters in a movie, man. Boof, and, Boof was a character in Teen Wolf. That was the girl that he wound up with at the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, well, spoiler. First of all, if you end up with a girl named Boof, you know, you you know, hey, you know. By the way, also <laughs> tuna is a spoiler. <laughs> hey, it's Herbert. And we all got to keep on moving, and we got to keep on pumping, we got to keep on jumping, we got to keep on fucking and sucking and licking and tricking and, 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 and just making sure that we're doing everything we can, controlling what we can control, and life's all about choices, and the choices you make, the choices you don't make, and the people that you meet and the people that you don't meet and the people that you eat if you're on bath salts. But if you're trying to figure out who you are and who you want to be, the best way to do that is to drink a bottle of Pinot Grigio, take all your clothes off. And, and jump off a roof onto a trampoline, and hopefully that trampoline decides what your next move is, which is back up onto the roof or straight through the ground, okay? And, and then you don't have to worry about a coffin and a, and a ceremony because you're just dead right there. Uh, or, you know, and, and hear me out, or uh, the neighbors come over and they've got some some young, fresh out of, uh, you know, a grad school daughter 
and she goes, well, who, who's that guy? And she's got a quick look at your package because you're, you're buck naked, right? Remember that part? And that's when she goes, well, who's that guy? And then you guys start talking, Facebooking, you know, lengthening. Uh, and, uh, and next thing you know, boom, you're having uh, triplets, and, and she's leaving you for uh, her Pilates trainer named uh, Sebastian, right, which is just his stage name. His real name's Craig, but he thought Sebastian was a sexier name that, that MILFs and Cougars would want to play, play with themselves to. So, uh, you know, in, in keeping in the spirit of the holidays, which we're coming up on uh, post-Easter and post-Passover, I just want everyone to take a moment to take a deep breath and say, I'm, I'm fine, all right? Life's getting crazy, but I'm good, you know? I ain't great, but I'm good. I'm fine. It's okay. You know, I'm living another day, James Bond style. You know, die another day? Hey, I'm going to live another day. Fuck you, Daniel Craig. And I, and I don't mean that literally. I mean it figuratively because cause I'd love to have you on the show someday or even have a cup of coffee with you or, uh, or you know, drag race with you, you know? You seem like a fun guy. Where's he from, by the way? Like, Daniel Craig, that's a hot guy. That's that's He's on my top of the list of guys I'd fuck if I wasn't married. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like I'm not, you know. Sometimes you feel like a, what's that, that candy commercial? Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. I think that's corn nuts, but it's also Daniel Craig. Sometimes you want to help him bust a nut, and sometimes you don't. But that's just, you know, that's college for you. My guest today, several people, Dr. Phil, uh, during the daytime is getting a little stale. I'm trying to take things up a notch, trying to com- communicate and connect with more people out there. And I've got so many famous celebrity friends. I thought I'd take a, a moment and take a, a, an hour really to sit down and, and talk with all of them about their issues and their problems, because we've all got shit going on. I mean, take Will Smith. He's, he's so hopped up on Scientology and Jada's pussy that he's trying to figure out who, you know, what's going on. You know, I'm trying to get jiggy with it, but I can't because you know, I'm I'm bitch slapping. Uh, you know, comedians. My my uh, my problem is I, I get too personal. I make friends too quick. And and one of my one of my dearest best friends, Jeff Bridges, who was kind enough to come sit down with me for a couple minutes and really just kick this thing off, uh, cool running style, and just jump into the bobsled with me and and coast down that fucking ice uh, ramp without any seat belts on. Jeff, I know that. First of all, thanks for being here. Man, you know, let me say this. Thanks for having me, man, and a happy Passover to you and your family. Do you celebrate the, uh, the, the, do you do it? I celebrate, uh, there's a, there's actually a, there's a, uh, there's a different holiday, man, that I really get behind that I, I, I learned when I was on a peyote trip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the lizard people of Guanancha, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of Passover and, uh, it's, it's a, but it, it takes the spirit of finding eggs, but instead of eggs, you're looking for your family. You all hide in the forest. You know what I like are those Starbucks egg bites, those egg white bites. Oh man, those! You know what? I'll tell you. You know what? Those Why don't are, we go looking for those in Passover? Uh, those are great. With you get some uh, some cheese whiz, right on top there, man. That's how I love celebrating that way. <laughs> you put cheese whiz on. I read your uh, books. You got. Uh, it's a whole series of stuff you can put cheese whiz on. You can put cheese whiz on the book. <laughs> And I say that right away, man. And you know what? If you order through Amazon right now, not the not the company, man. I mean, if you go to the store that I have in the Amazon, you can get, uh, if you buy four, it, you know, it, it comes with a free uh, can of cheese Whiz. Well, you know, speaking of egg white bites, I, I brought some, but I sat on them. <laughs> so they're, they're a little smushed up. Well, they're a little warm. Oh, good God. I actually didn't realize how flat and smushed. You know, I'm probably going to, that's going to be a hard pass. You know, and it was my own ass, my hot ass that sat on that egg bite, but it's gotten flattened into, uh, into uh, you know, it's... it's Roadkill. It's probably still <laughs> edible, but now is there something you wouldn't, uh, if you hit, let's say, what would be the, give me three things, uh, Jeff, that you'd hit with your car that you'd still eat. Uh, that I'd still eat? Um, you know, like, uh, you know, like ducks. And, uh, you know, man, like possum. Possum's sure. not bad. And also a, uh, a McRib. A McRib. Well, a McRib, you, you know, so the origin story of the McRib is cow, right? Well, the origin is actually, uh, it's Adam. 
So who's the impossible burger? Where are we getting that from? If cow is a, is beef, who's impossible? Well, uh, you know, man, I, I I I think it's probably you know made up. Made up. I, I I've had a couple of them, and I said you're telling me that this is not actual. Come on, man. Yeah, I heard that the tuna at Subway is not even real tuna. And they spell it T O O N A. H H. Now, you know what? Uh, and the bread, the bread is made is, is the same thing as Ashley Furniture. Oh, yeah. It's like couch cushions. Yeah, and I found a spring holders. in mine. You what? I found a spring. <laughs> <laughs> the tuna, well, first of all, you're going to spell it wrong, and it doesn't taste like it. You know, I've always said, if it, if whoever smelt it dealt it, but if it doesn't taste it, th- then I hate it. You know, if I, if I taste it and I hate it, it then I shouldn't be tasting it. Right? I couldn't agree more, man. And I think that, like... You know, the chemicals that they put into their meat. And first of all, Subway, let's just go ahead and rip off that sandwich artist label because you're the furthest thing from an artist, you know. I've seen so many young, prepubescent, acne-filled, HPV-ridden, knee brace, fucking, you know, jet ski accent. I cut my finger on trying to, you know, suck my girlfriend's clit ring off, you know, type of, you know, I, my dad sells fireworks to the government type kids. And they're walking in there trying to make me a, a, a six-inch, you know, uh, teriyaki chicken on honey oat. Don't cancel me. And and they uh, they don't even wash their hands. I'm like, you're not an artist. Even Picasso washed his hands before he rubbed one out. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. So what's your take on that? I don't like that they say eat fresh. Yeah, it ain't fresh. There's nothing fresh about this, man. Who are you? What camera is this, mine? <laughs> Come on, Subway. Yeah, don't bullshit me, what man. What should it be? Eat fresh. It should be just what? Uh, it should don't be, die? Uh, yeah, it should be eat shit. Eat shit. <laughs> because, uh, well, uh, well, I mean, listen. You could be their new spokesman. They're in dire need of a change. Well, some I'm, sort a li- of a, I'm bitter about it, man. You're a little I, too I, skinny, I though. You're a little too skinny. You got to be fat so they can push those fucking... Tuna with an H sandwiches on you, uh, and then you can drop some LBs and be like, "Hey, look, I ate fresh, and now I'm skinny." Fuck that noise. Just Jared give me was some bigger pants. Give him bigger pants. Let him hold him up. Jared was fat from the get go, but he had other concerns, right? Yeah, he was. Uh, you know what he used to? You know what made those pants so big? The kids he was smuggling in them. Oh, uh, now I read about that, but that was true, huh? It was. It was more than true. I uh, I, I saw the guy one time. Uh, you know, it was. Oh, just, you saw Jared live in the flesh. Oh, he used to work at the subway by my house, not the sandwich shop, the the, <laughs> the underground train. I was gonna say that'd be messed up if they let him work there after all that. No, this was before they found him. Oh Jesus! He was running a. Uh, he was situation. the turnstile guy. Huh. Oh, oh, he ran the. Oh yeah, the trafficking. Oh wow. Well, plenty of tuna. <laughs> T O O N A H. Well, that's. Are you a good speller? Would you go on one of those script spelling bees? I'm not. Given the chance, give, uh, you know, I, I'm not a speller, man. I'm more of a. Uh, I'm more of a uh, of a smoker. Right. Uh, meats and uh, weed. And a poet. I've seen quite a few uh, slam poetry nights. Uh, in downtown LA and in 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 upstate New York, where you're just laying down rhythms and rhymes uh, and 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 just spitting fire, quite frankly, in 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 front of people that truly uh, are the best of the best. Uh, Eminem uh, famously said, "We have it here somewhere," uh, where Eminem said, um, uh, "Eminem said, uh, wow, you know, when he saw you, he did. You know, I I actually dug, I go with nothing prepared." That's what a lot of people don't know about. Off me, the man. dome, yeah. I just say, hey, I go, give me a give me a sound. I don't even need a word. Here we go, ready? Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh is uh is from the movie Teen Wolf. <laughs> and and I and I would say that Bobby Finstock was the coach. And and, and Boof and, and Styles, you know, sometimes I just name the characters in a movie, man. Boof, and, Boof was a character in Teen Wolf? That was the girl that he wound up with at the end. Spoiler alert! Yeah, well, spoiler, first of all, if you end up with a girl named Boof, you know, you, you know, hey, you know. By the way, also, <laughs> Tuna's a spoiler. <laughs> I'm impressed by your knowledge of 80s films. I'm more impressed by your ability to assimilate. You talk about making up rhymes on the spot. You make up all your lines in all your films. I didn't know that. I didn't know that in Crazy Heart uh, and in Tron and in Big Lebowski, the first 45 minutes, 
uh, was a monologue originally of you just talking to camera, but then uh, you know eventually, as movies do, they go. We have other characters, we have other uh, coverage angles we need to get. Let's get let's move off of Jeff, but you just make shit up and they use it because 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 you threaten to sue. What's well, that about? Well, all those movies man, were were pitched to me as a uh, as a one man show. Great, I'd see that. I didn't. I, I, I honestly, when I when I when I saw Crazy Heart, I thought it was about the game operation, and I was like, "Don't touch that heart, Buzz." <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> now you know. I heard that movie was in the works for a long time. Long time. And man. you know, again, I know the industry can be so rough, and the highs, the lows. You know, you're you're hard, you're soft, you're wet, you're dry. You know, and 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 that's just you know, and that's just if you work at, at, at the the girl subway, yeah, or the girl or the strip club, which the first subway strip club combination center was open in Rancho Cucamonga, and Tom Mix was there to cut the ribbon. And Tom, I know that when you open any new business, you say I've got to be a a believer in what the message is first. And this subway strip club combination center, you know, talk about eating fresh. Well, I uh, <laughs> I, I got to say this. The thing that I I, I, know, I like strip clubs. Everybody knows that I've got I have my own. I, you know I've got my own chain of strip clubs called Woody's. And, uh, and also you over tip. Well, <laughs> not just the tip <laughs> is what I always say. Is what <laughs> and then you pull out a fifty and then I pull out. It's the only time. <laughs> but I will say this: Rita and I say we love going to strip clubs. It's what it's. It's, it's a getaway. It's, it's your escape. Absolutely. It's couples therapy. Some people go to the barcade. Some people just, you know, will go to space if you're Bezos to escape your uh, whore of a wife, you know. But, but, but you, you like to just, you know, take a, uh, take, take a step back and appreciate the, the, the art that is stripping because well, it is an art. Absolutely. I, I am there for the artist. Hey, now 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 we I heard you talking before about subway sandwich artists. Yeah, well that's yeah. Well, but the but the strippers that make the sandwiches <laughs> at this strip club. Now these. Wow. <laughs> now these are artists. These are artists. <laughs> and I heard somebody made a compilation tape. You know, I love compilations, right? Whether it's dads getting kicked in the taint or fat girls falling off bicycles. There's always like fun videos out there of just stuff going on where you go, that's good for a laugh and then some. There's a compilation of you of just you reacting to the strippers doing moves on stage. I'd like to play that real quick. We have it. It's all these tricks of girls climbing the poles, jumping off the poles, doing the splits, eating themselves out, one after the other, and they've got a compilation of just you reacting. So I'm going to play here. Wow! Wow! Oh! Oh, yeah. Wow! Now that is flexible. Oh! I'd like uh, I'd like to uh, taste that, Snozberry. Oh! Give me some! Oh, Wilson, Rita Wilson, you're gonna want to see this. You and that, and that was the night, and that was the night that Rita went on stage. You couldn't find her because she slipped away. Because, uh, and, and what you've wrote, talked about in your uh, in your book, uh, No Hanks, uh, a book about how to give gratitude. The sequel's coming out. The second one, it's called Hanks No Hanks. Well, see, that's you're good. You're good at that. You're good at that stuff about. First of all, digging deep to the core of who we are as people and going, look, my, my son might be Chet. You know, and I got Colin who was, you know, I got, we all, nothing in life is perfect, right? You go, shit, one of my, one of my feet is bigger than the other one, right? Both my nuts are, are real big and heavy. But, you know, does that mean that I, you know, that I still don't enjoy a late night snack? Okay. I think that as you, when you wake up, you go, shit, peeing with a boner is tough, but shitting with a boner is damn near impossible, Burger, right? Oh, I've been there. Where? Well, shitting with a boner. <laughs> and how do you deal with it? I say, I'll tell you. I was, I, I was in a, a cowboy movie one time. Called? Uh, uh, called The John Wayne Story. But it was not about that John Wayne. <laughs> It was about a different John Wayne. People forget there's multiple people named those things. There's a lot of guys named John Wayne. Are there multiple Tom Hanks? Well, yes, there are. But uh, why? Well, he's from Spain. It's Tomas. Tomas Hanks. But it's spelled almost the same. And yeah. Thomas the train engine, a lot of people don't know this. Last name, Hanks. Do you, do you, so have you sued, did you sue them? 
Well, I uh, they uh, copyright infringement is uh, is not my. I, I I like I'm a a a a borrower of the Tom Hanks name, as if the way our life and money we borrow it in this lifetime. And when I uh, pass on, other Tom Hanks will take the moniker and move forward. I don't think you're gonna die. You strike me as one of those guys that found the golden ticket, the golden goose, the magic pill, the magic train, right? The uh, the thing that keeps you clicking and ticking. Baby's blood, the endocrine in baby's blood. <laughs> Now, part of me, because you got such great comedic time and wants to laugh at that, but I feel like you're serious. Well, QAnon does run my uh, Wikipedia page. I've been talking about trying to drink blood for years now, and all and people always tell me, you're crazy, you know, get off my property, right? Uh, you know, stop screaming at my kids. And I'll just say, well, you know, they got blood that's going to keep us alive, right? And by the way, they're not using all that blood. You got a lot of blood as a kid. And your body makes more. Constantly. Don't be selfish with your blood. It's like a frozen yogurt machine. There's more in the back. It's a magic lunchbox from Return to Oz. <laughs> it replenishes itself. That's a great. I lost my virginity to that movie. Wow. Return to Oz. It was like the Wizard of Oz knockoff. I think the Scarecrow was like a pumpkin head guy. Don't cancel me. He was. Yeah, but but you've done so much stuff, Tom, that it... it it makes some of your friends jealous, and one of the things I talk about daily in my show is is support versus uh, bitterness, jealousy versus ridicule. Um, you know, finding the goodness without taking away from the negative, because you want to find both sides, right? If you if you board a plane and somebody goes, "Hey, wear a mask," and you've got some guy behind you saying, you know, and Mr. Trump, I know that you know you. Even on Air Force One, they tried to make you wear a mask, and you did not want to do it. But because you said, you know, it's a free country, but also my face, people want to see my face. But, you know, I don't know if that was true, but you stuck to it. Let me just say this, okay? I don't wear masks. I don't wear them for Halloween. I won't wear them for surgery, okay? I don't wear them at any point because I think it's not real, COVID, okay? And masks, actually, if they don't do much of anything, and I think, believe me, a lot of people are saying, I'm not the only one. I mean, I'm saying it right now, but so many people, so many people, mask people, look this up. You can look this up. Believe me. Believe me. Mask people are saying, we don't work. We don't work. Well, we don't, they don't, they don't, I don't, Look, I still have COVID, okay? I got it when it started. It has not gone away. I lost my taste. I lost my smell. I lost my ability to love, which was the craziest part. And not just for my wife, but I love Halo. I love Snackwell's cookies. And now I just don't even, you know, you could just fucking queef down my throat and I'd still go to bed on time. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I've been to Russia, and they do that in a lot of great hotels there. And you and you and you're a world traveler, but you're also uh you're also an ambassador of places that that don't get a lot of love. Mar Lago, for example, was just known as a Florida's butthole pretty much until you dug up a golf course there. Let me just say this, okay? And I love Mar a Lago, okay? There's Disneyland, okay, terrible company. They let the well, gal- well, well. I loved. I okay. They let the alligators eat the children. The but, alligator came out of the golf course and said, "Yum, yum, yum! Give me this child." Well, first of all, alligators can't talk, but you're probably not wrong. If they could talk, uh, that's probably what he said. But the kid also was asking for it, okay? How do you know that that kid didn't want to be eaten? He definitely, he probably was covered in delicious baby oil, and this is true. Well, okay? it was a chubby kid. Most fat kids smell like syrup, and that's a fact. You can Google it. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. I think if you're a kid and you're walking your water, you got to assume there's a creature coming out of it. I assume that anything could be grabbed. Pussy or child at any time. And let me just say this. Okay? Well, that's a part of your Pussy or Child Safety Act that you tried to implement, but Joe Biden shut it down. And that was the first time. It was the time. Jared Fogel Act. The who? The Jared Fo- <laughs> Oh, there's the tuna guy with an H. The guy who ran Subway. Fogel was his last name. Yes. I never knew his last name. I just knew Jared from Subway. The same way I was like, Hitler, what's his last name? Turns out it is. Fogel. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> See, and that's why you got to read, because there's so many facts out there that we just don't know, but we think we know. Listen, I, I read all the time. I read the Bible every day. I read a lot of things. And most importantly, let me just say this, because sure. a lot of people are asking. I've got great property, not just in Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago is the number one property that I have, but I also have them in North Korea. 
Oh. I've got great property in North Korea. I think it's unbelievable, and I have it in uh, wonderful places, and I think that uh, you should come out and visit. Uh, you'd be my guest. It'd be so beautiful. It's so great. Well, I'm not a big golf guy. I'm a big uh, ping pong guy. I'm a big, uh, I like to bowl, right? Uh, just... They have bowls of all sizes. Well, you know, bowling the sport, but I, what I do love, what I do love is a good hammock uh, in the in the middle of the afternoon, right? Right after a rub and tug, just to lay in a hammock and just sway from back and forth next to sway from uh, that serious radio show uh, in New York. Isn't that his name? Yes, I thought. I think were, it's sway. I thought you were talking about obscure American Idol contestant Sway Panella, Jose Sway Panella. Well, there you should have won, and I've said that for a long time. Well, Jose Swapanella, if you're listening, and we know you are, Trump loves you. If you want to talk about true people that were robbed from that contest's championship, uh, it's uh, it's Sanjaya. Okay, I was a big, I was the first guy to vote for Sanjaya because he sent me a text right after and said, "Hey, you actually, you know, they actually put my number up on the screen instead of the vote for number." So he texted me back, and now we keep in touch. Probably a little too much, you know. He's you know, he's not doing so hot, and I don't like to surround myself with losers. But but there is something to be said about going somewhere, recognizing the importance, and taking advantage. And Nicolas Cage does that every time he films a movie. He goes there first, learns the language, learns what the people do, and then assimilates. And Nick, I know that you're getting ready to go on a massive speaking tour to not only promote your movie, but to promote just, just uh, meditation and... And, and and cream cheese. You're coming out with the new Nick Cage cream cheese, which is seems a little unorthodox, but also go on. It's uh, thank you uh, uh, for having me. So uh, most people don't know this, but it's Cage flavored. Hell yeah. There's a uh, Tony Hawk and uh, Lil Nas X put a little bit of their blood in those shoes. We put a little bit of Cage <laughs> and all the cream cheese. Now, are you a cream cheese? Do you like it? Jeff Bridges likes cheese whiz on everything. Do you like cream cheese on everything, or is it a bagel-only uh, household for you? You know, the same way you'll like meet a couple, and they'll go, you know, we have three positions we like, right? Indoors, outdoors, and doggy. Are you are you like someone with cream cheese where you're like, bagel, is that's it, or I go bagel, I go toast, I go, you know, Pop-Tart, just the back of it maybe? Uh, sure. I... Uh, uh, I will uh, uh, take a, uh, uh, a sword. I collect swords. Hell yeah. And I will I will knife out some cream cheese and I will eat the entire box. Well, you got a good metabolism, so I, I assume that you can pound uh, a couple you know jugs of that shit and not feel the side effects, but you do seem a little droopy, a little sleepy. I have a, a secret that I uh, will reveal here. I actually use uh, a, a tapeworm. That's how I stay so fit, but it makes me so tired at the exact same time. So, uh, I, uh, I pound, uh, Celsius, uh, 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 Oh, uh, hey, well, cheers. I'm on the peach vibe right now, and I'm not usually a peach guy. You know, my favorite flavor is, uh, red, whether we're talking Starburst or Suckers or, uh, Kool-Aid or, uh, you know, even when I have to buy my wife uh, tampons, I like the red box the best. Uh, Power Ranger, red, that was my favorite. Crayons. Crayons, I like red. Um, trying to think of other red stuff. Uh, 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 the thing that uh, you use in bingo. Bingo ink. Bingo ink. Bingo red, ink. Red bingo ink. And when I get it, I go, bingo! I Well... Paul Giamatti is who I first played bingo with, but it was over Zoom during the pandemic. And, Paul, I, I hate to th throw you under the bus or put you back inside of it and tie you to the back seat and let the fat kids throw spitballs at you. But Oh, I've been there. You're competitive. You're competitive as fuck, and you kind of ruined the game for me and my family, to be honest with you. Well, I'm a very, very competitive guy, as you know, Dr. Phil. There's few things that I am uh, not competitive about, and, and bingo is the uh, is the number one thing. People say, Paul, you can't beat us at bingo, and I said, let's go. Well, yeah, it was like five. It was like blackout, or it was no, it was it was a cross. You got five across real quick, and you fucking you flipped out, you know. And we were just it was not even seven o'clock yet, and you hadn't and you were drinking Merlot too. I know. Listen. 
You're not remembering that story very well. I was not drinking Merlot, okay? I was drinking Pinot Noir, <laughs> all right? I was drinking Pinot Noir and a little bit of Coca-Cola. Well, that's, that's called the Giamatti, <laughs> when you ruin a very expensive wine with some cheap soda. Well, your fucking attitude ruined that night of bingo, and I'll never forget that. But thank God Anthony Bourdain was there because, you know, I've got, uh, people don't know this, you get a certain amount of money in your life. Oprah's got it, Tony Robbins has got it, Will Smith had it, but, you know, Jada seems to be sucking that uh, that tooth dry. But, but I do think that if you get to a certain place in life, you can afford uh, to, uh, to stay connected uh, with those who have moved on. And, and my, my good pal Anthony Bourdain, who, uh, who I see bi-weekly uh, and bisexually because I'm, you know, always looking to, to figure out what we're capable of as humans, you know. Sure, you know, nipples are sensitive, but, you know, how strong is a, is a urethra? You know, and, and, and Anthony, I know you told me when you went to Singapore that they've got foods you didn't even know were on the menu. As we go through life, every time, the only thing that makes it worth it are the surprises. <laughs> the things that you think you eat every day, whether it is dirt for an earthworm, a cotton sweater for a moth, or pizza for Paul Giamatti. Or a Ninja Turtle. Paul Giamatti. <laughs> his splinter? Is the Ninja Turtle of people. <laughs> I, was, I just want to stop from here, Okay. I, I, I auditioned to play Michelangelo because I am a party dude. And you know who they made me? Bebop. <laughs> You're going to fucking make my mustache pop off. <laughs> and the only way I like to be surprised is so much so that if I were to grow a mustache, it would pop right off. <laughs> and when I went to Singapore, I got just that. Welcome to Surprise Foods, Singapore. Well, the must. If I were at any restaurant and someone said came out and said, "Would you like to try our mustache?" You know, I'd say first of all, how old is he? Second of all, you know, you know, is it on a he? You know, and thirdly, you know, sure, because I'm DFW down for whatever. And uh, you know who also? I never knew this about Jason Statham. Jason, you constantly, especially post Cove. Really turned me on to the idea. First of all, you turned me on. You're on this new workout regimen where you're doing like 60 push-ups in a minute, which I didn't, you know, for the longest time I thought a minute, not a lot of good stuff could get, could get, uh, could happen in a minute. But, you know, <laughs> Dan Bilzerian, you know, fucking flipped the script on that. Is that guy's just constantly living on Bukaki Island and he's the mayor. But, but I think that when you find something you love, you do it a lot. If it doesn't hurt anyone, and all you're doing is breaking hearts and, and, and stocking farts, but but that's not just a fun phrase you say. It's something you live by. But I live by, yeah. But did you did you know that COVID was coming, or did you did you sense Omicron was next? Did, are you excited for a new variant? Are you gonna can you do you think you could drop kick it? If the new variant was a person, who would it be? The predator. You know the movie Predator. No, right? oh, I've seen it. Yeah. So I was on a retreat. Okay, about two years. You back. love retreats, don't you? I, I got to get out of here. You know what I mean? I Do you like it. treats or retreats better? I say trick or retreat <laughs> for Halloween in my house, and I say, and I do this. Let me just say this: when I'm out of town, I get off the grid, and I was in a jungle of Bolivia, and I, and suddenly. Well, it's a great story. Uh, just a, a quick l lesson to anyone out there telling a story: uh, a country. Followed by, or I'm sorry, a lo uh, uh, an exotic location followed by a country you've never been to or probably won't is a great way to suck me off into a story that I'd never thought I'd pay attention to. Jungle, check. Bolivia, check. Statham, I'm I'm halfway to I'm halfway to fucking come town right now, and I and I don't even bring a map. My phone's dead. Well, let me get you there all the way. So I'm in a jungle of Bolivia. Right. And we're with a lot of guys here, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of soldiers. And suddenly, there's this coronavirus thing that nobody can see, except I can see it. And it kills all my mates. By the end of it, though, I got him. You and got who? Coronavirus. I killed it. That well, was, it's a... That was the first time I ever encountered it. And then there was a second wave of corona they did with Danny Glover. But I wasn't a part of that. 
Damn. See, that's what I'm talking. You got that cool. You got that swagger where you just fucking, you just fuck shit up constantly. You know, I'm just constantly. You know, I'm like I stubbed my toe in the dishwasher a couple nights ago. You know, I just kicked someone right there. See, that's that's fucking. That's. I know a second. I'm just getting ready. Now do you have? Oh, my stepdad's calling. Now tell him I say hey. hi. Yeah, he'll probably make it weird if I pick up. Is there? Is there? Is there something? Is there something about karate? Am I am pronouncing it right? Karate. That 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 keeps us from truly making it the sport of sports. MMA, UFC, UTI, TI, um, TP. UTA. UTA, CAA, uh, HPV, WNBA, AT&T. We'll be right back. How many times do you, how many times do you find yourself going, I could kick that guy's ass? In a normal day, you walk down the street. Let's say you walk down Rodeo Boulevard, okay? Rodeo Drive, which is one block away from the boulevard. And you walk down, you see a, Every type of person, you know, you see a fat guy, you see a, a Persian guy with nice shoes, you see a Armenian guy with bad shoes, mm. you see a woman with an Armenian guy with cool shoes next to a guy with bad shoes. What do you do? Do you do you just do you size them up? Do you let them know I could fuck you up? Because I've always wanted that. I do that at, uh, you know, if I, you know, look, I go to a putt putt course. There's some kid who's got a hole in one. He's trying to impress some girl that hopefully he can, you know, you know. Finger later, I definitely, I definitely give him a little elbow on the next hole and just go, "You ain't shit, bitch." But that's just for my own ego, you know. And also, I'm, I like to be king of the putt putt. How do you handle that? I think about it like this. Okay, I do that with animals. If I see, oh, you talk animal, shit to creatures. See, I'm done. I've beaten every human I could find. You know what I mean? So next, I use the challenge so I go, you know, swipe left on human. Right. But if I see an animal who's being kind of cocky. Do you know what I mean? You ever see like cookie a, or cocky? A little bit of both, you know. And um, when you see a duck, <laughs> like a duck, duck, a duck, brown, like a quack quack. Oh, right. And you see this guy, you know, and he's over there, just like being a fucking duck. You're going like, oh, do you think you can take me? I fought a lot of ducks. Damn, could just because I like stole your bread or something? Listen, it's my bread. I was eating at Subway, right? And, uh, well, was, people don't know this. You just buy loaves and loaves of bread, and you just sit out next to ponds and eat it. Suck them down. And, you know, you can't fall like a duck. Of a of a Play-Doh fun factory. You know, that was coming out. I'm just going in. Oh, in one bite. Yeah. Like a goddamn uh, boa constrictor. I'm sucking down mice. Except instead of mice, it's loaves. It tastes like Ashley Furniture. Now, boa constrictor, <laughs> constrictor is a great name if you're a, a porn star that loves to, uh, you know, gargle on... Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I Rhymes do. with cock. But I think that if you're a if you're a guy who just likes to sit on a park bench next to a lake or a pond or an ocean or whatever, you know, what have you, there's a pool where a ducks body can, of water. A body of water where ducks can frequent and it's not illegal. And you're sitting there with tons of bread, it's not wrong for the duck, okay, to assume that you're there to feed them. Now, if they charge at you, which I've seen happen. I've seen upwards of 800 ducks charge charge a man, and, and it was a deaf man, and he couldn't hear him coming, and they, they, they nibbled on this guy, and, you know, thank God, you know, m- my phone had died. My friends was, we captured the whole thing, about 13 minutes of a fucking, just a duck fuck feast. These guys, and, and I'm not using the word fuck lightly, they ate this guy, and then a couple of the ducks, it looked like penetration. Let me tell you what happened one time. A similar situation. It's actually on my YouTube page. Right now, Quick mate. shout out to the Statham YouTube channel. One of my newest uh, favorite go-tos. I appreciate that very much. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed like subscribe. with... subscribe. I'm obsessed with Statham's YouTube page and those uh, those shows where the guy pushes on people's foreheads and, and gives them their skills back. Have you seen that? No, I've never seen it. Oh, guy, it's, it's like late night infomercials, like it's some sort of Jesus Christ, Buddha, Baba. Some guy walks out and he's like, hey, you know, this guy can't, you know, he's he can't stop. He's got, you know, a premature ejaculator. And then he pushes on the guy's forehead and he falls off the stage, stands back up. And he's like, I only come when I want to now. And then some woman's like, I can't read. 
And then he fucking, you know, kicks her in the fucking butt or something. And then she falls over. And then she's like, you know, and then she pulls out a fucking menu from the Cheesecake Factory and reads it backwards. You know, say this. Is this Jared Fogel? Well, I I mean, that's one guy they could not help. They pushed him in the forehead and and he goes, that reminds me of the time I was at the ball pit. And then they just pulled them. They they took off his lavalier mic and sent him back into the uh, I believe the sound bang bus. Just keep pushing. Just push a little harder. Oh. Now softer. Now harder. Right. Now sort of. So I'm obsessed with that in your YouTube channel because you post a lot of clips. Of me fighting the, this guy, right? Or was it a farm? You know what I mean? Just like feeding. No, it's just feeding the goats. I got a lot of goats. So the goats are there. And we got a little, I put a little feed in there. And I put it said, hey, he knows what to do. So all of a sudden, I see this bloke over there. And then a flock of cocks. Just a flock of cocks. Like it's a goddamn ex hamster search. Oh, boy. A flock of cocks go to ascend on this guy. And before he knows, he turns How many around. cocks are we talking, by the way? I'm 69. And he looks at him and he goes... This is why you got to follow Statham's YouTube page. Unintentional comedy. That's funny. 69 is the most dangerous position out there, but the funniest number of cocks to be chasing someone. Keep going. So I, I run in slow-mo, you know what I mean? I was, but I, I fed the feta for the goats. And you I fed them feta? I fed, I fed them feta. Uh, the goat feta, actually. I said, this is what you taste like. Delicious. Isn't feta made from goats? It is. You know who told me that? John Stamos. God damn. Is he smart or what? Well, somebody, no, somebody told him we were playing telephone. He knows everything about the <laughs> Greek Jesus. Uh, don't cancel me. You, I don't think you can say Greek cheeses anymore. Oh, sorry. It's fine. You can say it. I oh. just can't say it. Oh, okay, right. People with hair can get away with a lot more these days. Oh, is that true? I, I, I'll, I'll get. Well, Jason stay from being bald. I don't know why I'm wearing. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing a toupee. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my third thing I wanted to say. Is I love your new look. I appreciate it. Wait, Jason stay uh, toupees. <laughs> So you're fighting these cocks. So I'm running into the field, right? And then the cocks, as they do, they turn on me. And they just start <laughs> coming at me. I got 69 cocks just trying to spread at me, right? And it just keeps hitting me in the chest. And I'm like blocking them. And I'm doing a lot of things. And I'm just wringing these cocks out. And I got two in each hand. And, there's and I'm some... double barreling. And then I realize I take my goddamn shoe up. And I'm just <laughs> I'm taking four at <laughs> once. And there's some people don't know this I about. I beat them off. I beat all the cocks off and they left. And they just fucked off, huh? I fucked them off. Well, and see, that's, look, and you, it's times like those you go, I wish the cameras were rolling. I wish we captured that for some sort of an opening to a movie called Take That Cock. We did capture it. It's on my YouTube page. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe to Statham's YouTube. Speaking of liking and subscribing, I can't subscribe enough to uh, one of the sponsors of the podcast, which is also something that I've been wanting to happen for the longest time. My dear friend Christopher Walken, he and I look. We went to we went to a Hebrew school together. We weren't we're not Jews, but we we crashed wedding crasher style, and it's where we would get some strange, you know. And I'm I've always we crashed a lot of bat mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, just mitzvahs in general. You, I mean, you were talk about a guy who gives out mitzvahs. I've never seen a guy pull out a chair for more women in my entire life who appreciated the gesture. And that's what half a life is, attempting the gesture. Make make a make an impulse to be to have a purposeful decision that uh that coincides with your beliefs but doesn't take away from 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 the moment itself but adds to it. Don't take away, add to it. And you've always said that, Chris. And what I love about First of all, what I love about what you do is that you're just doing it. You don't stop. You don't quit. You're like a, you're like a, you're like a burn victim in that way. You go, you know, it got hot, but I'm gonna keep on keeping. I'm like a firefighter. I'm like a. Let me just say this. I'm like a cat who's fleeing a burning building, but the kittens are still inside. So I'm gonna go back for all that pussy because. That's your it's family. It's the right thing to do. And I say it at bar, in bat mitzvahs, I say, well, you shalom. Give a, you give a lot of speeches at bat mitzvahs. A lot of people see Chris. They know he crashed. You know he's not part of the family. He's asked to go up and give a speech uh, in front of the whole family. And Absolutely. And you don't even speak Hebrew, but you say it in a way that sounds like you do. A lot of phlegm. I said, hello. How are you today? <laughs> Happy to be here. And they go, this guy must be circumcised. 
And she's like, what is this guy, a rabbi? But you've played a rabbi. Many times. And the thing about just uh, putting on the yarmulke, it's you transform, you know, you do. You feel like you feel like a different person, and you're a simpleton in that way. I know it just takes a jacket or a shoe to make you get into character. I'm the Daniel Day-Lewis of props. You just give me whatever I'm in. Now, last time I spoke to you, it was over, uh, uh, I had a, I had a tuna with an H sandwich earlier, and I know we were joking about it, but I feel like something's bubbling up. Listen, I actually am in talks right now to play um, the founder of Subway. Now, that's a movie I'd like to see, because your side businesses are getting going, but I know that acting is still your true passion, but you told me over Skype that the walk-in closet is just about ready. The prototype is ready. It's ready to... We need to start calling Bed Bath & Beyond. We need to start calling... Sharper Image. Sharper Image, Brookstone. Sky Mall. Mary Fuck Kill. Sky Mall, Brookstone, Sharper Image. Well, you, you, gotta, you gotta kill Sky Mall because half the time, the Wi-Fi, it doesn't work. I want to order. It's a dick tease. It's a di- hey. It's I'm in. You see a toaster that knows your birthday, and then all of a sudden, you know, cl- click to buy. Excuse me. Can we please restart the Wi-Fi? And we don't. And then I can't order. And by the time I'm off the plane, you forget about I it. Forget about it until right now. You only want it when you're up in the fucking sky. When the air is thin. It's the mall for the sky. I don't want it. it who buys shit from Sky Mall on the ground? No, it's that's, meant to be bought in the fucking air. It's sorry for. It's Land Mall. Yeah, I, or Sea Mall. You ever been to Sea Mall? Where's that? See, is it? It's underwater. Oh, it's next to Sea World. The only way you can get there is by Uber underwater scuba. Who works there? Dolphins. So when you were a kid, <laughs> when you were a kid, did you always fantasize about opening your own restaurant? Because always. walk-in closets crushing it. Always. But now you've got walk-ins welcome, which is basically walk-ins, you know, walk-ins walk-ups. It's well, my food truck. Right. <laughs> which is which is great because, you know, you're synonymous with food. I think every movie I've seen you in, you're snacking on something or someone. You got to. That's why I love porn. But let me just say this. My favorite thing, we're going to announce it right here on the program. Oh, great. We're doing a walkathon. You're doing a walk. Well, see, that was, I knew that was next. We're doing a walkathon where we're going to try to raise money for Walken's disease. Well, what is that? It's a, it's a cold. I get it every now and then. <laughs> and we don't have a cure. A lot of people, they don't know this. Because you can take over-the-counter shit. You can... It's garbage. Everything they sell is garbage, huh? Garbage. So you want to come out with a whole shit. new line of medicine. Yeah, but we need to raise the money for it. So Well, because we... you got stiff competition. You got Benadryl, NyQuil, Dayquil. And NyQuil is the stuff, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, stuff you had fever. So you can rest medicine. And I always say, yeah, I can rest after I fucking hallucinate for an hour and a half. Last time I took NyQuil, I thought I had, a, I had a dream. I was a panda going down on Katy Perry. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. It was a great dream, A, because I've always wanted to see a panda live. So I went, I looked in the mirror, I brushed my teeth. I said, what, fucking this rules. And then Katie's like, where are you at? And I was like, I'll be right there, quickly trying to make myself not a panda. Cause it I'm, was your teenage dream. Baby, I was a firework. Wow. Give she, me some of that NyQuil. I'd like to try this. Well, that should be their new commercial. It's just some, some you know, doctor, you know, going, I shouldn't take this because it's not prescribed to me, but I'm going to because I can't fucking sleep. So I'm going to take it, guzzle, 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 right? Pills, pills, guzzle, right? And next thing you know, I'm face down in a mouthful of KP looking to, you know, looking to roar, you know? I love it. I will say this. For the walkathon drugs, we will have plenty of hallucinogens. In the drugs. So okay. you're going to have things to make you sleep and make you just stop coughing. What's going to be the sneeze antidepressant? We do this thing. They have it in Mucinix. But That's another one you got to fuck with. But Mucinix. This thing, it really dries you out. Your mouth and your nose are going to feel like a litter box. You're going to be, oof. Is that like, good? It is. I'm going to play the devil's advocate. Is that good? Have you seen the movie Dune? No. Oh, Wow. The sandworms, you're going to feel like a sandworm. Again, just to double down on that, I think you don't, you want to be dry sometimes. Yeah. 
but not all the time. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I went to school with a girl who was constantly, uh, she had a squirting problem, and we used to call her Squirt Sarah. And she, it wasn't a clever nickname, but it did enough damage on her socially that she transferred. But we we always thought, wow, I bet she would have loved a pill that would have made her dry up a little. So you're talking about just that. Yeah, to dry your, your sandworm out. Let me tell you about Squirtle Sarah, the, the Pokemon character. Your friend, all she had to do is take some walk-in drugs. And they're in the shape of me. The Flintstones have the vitamins, but these walk-in drugs. Is so it's just one like Theranos could oh, just get all the diseases it's all in with one. one prick. It's just one pill. It's also a limitless pill. It's a lot of things. Was now, that movie good? It wasn't good. It was great. Because it really it talked about how we're all limitless and well we some of us have limitations not on that pill i need you for the commercial now this is going to be the commercial because i pill. i feel like i've got limited i can't juggle first of all try, you know try this pill whoa juggling is actually i can't believe you're bringing this up juggling well, is I a like side to get effect. deep on my show juggling is a side effect of the walking effect which is the name because it was developed for a guy in a wheelchair originally. Can and guess you, what? He started walking. He doesn't have to go to that guy to push on his fucking forehead then. No, he does not. Just take your pill. Well, that's what I like, an entrepreneur. You know, someone who's thinking outside the box, outside the bun, right? Just someone who's looking to take things up a notch but not make it too crazy, right? Yeah. You walk into a nightclub, which I know you do, and people stop and turn and go, who's that guy? And you go, they go, did he just walk in here, right? And how do you feel about people that do impressions of you? I mean, I've never heard a great one. Right. I've heard some good ones on the YouTube and the TikTok, but not one that was accurate. If you had a billion dollars right now, Chris, what new, what would, who would you give it to? Would you give it to like, would you, would you open a zoo? And what sort of animals would you put in it? And follow-up question, would you, would you buy like an island, or would you just like buy islands the restaurant, and just and just be able to go in whenever you wanted to? First of all, uh, I, I would not buy a zoo because we Matt Damon already did it. We bought a zoo. I was up for JB Smooth's part. Fuck. And the thing is, zoos they they cage animals. They cage. It's also been done. Been there, been that. Been. Let's set these animals free. Right. Well, that's Madagascar, isn't it? Isn't that the plot of Madagascar? Absolutely. A zebra. Bye bye Lion guy, go home. I'd pay a million bucks to see you ride a zebra out of the zoo as the rest of the animals followed behind, as if you were like the fucking Pied Piper, you know? I need to buy a zebra. Well, I know a zebra guy. It ain't cheap, and it's not legal. And I don't actually know him, but I, but but I could figure it out because I'm one of those guys where I, where there's a will, there's a way, and I know Will Farrell, Will Wheaton, and Will Clark, the Major League Baseball player, and all those guys know zebra guys. So between that, I said we get ourselves a couple of zebras and and we ride across Africa, Mississippi, yes, the Both Africa of the West, of the West. Because of the, the rivers. Well, they're shooting Blended 2 over there soon. The Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore movie. I think I'm probably in it. I have to talk to my agent. I mean, every film he does. I want to play a zebra in this new one. Zebra is a great uh, porn name or stripper name or someone that just works at like a donut shop. His stripes are right. Oh, yeah. I think that's what we do. I get you. You and I play the wisecracking zebras. In the movie, and we get a female named Deborah the Zebra. And there's three of us, like the jackals or the hyenas and mm. the Lion King. And we narrate the whole film as these wisecracking, hilarious zebras. Well, if we're going to have a film where we have people voicing characters like that, we'd have to have my man Seth Rogen, who, who I don't think people understand... Seth, and first of all, uh, you reached out to me to be on today's show because you said, I've got some stuff I need to talk about. I've got some laundry I need to air out because we're approaching a time in life 
where we've never seen this much division uh, uh, between not just people, but the types of people, and also in schools. They're bringing back division, right? In I, math, it's it's unbelievable. Like when I when I was uh, when I was a kid, I, uh, I I I was like, wow, it seems like everything is you know getting better, and you know up in Canada, it's like we you know we 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 feel united, but like you know in the last few years, it's just been like, wow, everybody is so angry at everybody, <laughs> and it's just like eh, eh, you know I, I've got to like smoke more weed than I ever wanted to before, just to like sort of mellow out. It's like you know give me the anxiety. Yeah, I, I get anxiety like I just wake up in the middle of the night and I think I'm like in a cage, right? Or I start thinking about, I have flashbacks to T-ball when my coach would like, you know, spit on me if I struck out. Do you have thoughts like that? Are there things that trigger moments in your life where you go, I wish I was better? Uh, yeah, when I, uh, absolutely, absolutely. The other day I was out there and I, I, I thought I was smoking purple nurple and I was actually smoking a, a puffy dumpster and oh. I was like, wow, fuck that noise, fuck that noise. And there was like so much noise in my head and I was like, all right, you know, Hey, hey, hey I'll, uh, you know, you know what I'll do is I'll just like cancel it all out. So I just like took another thing that's called a, a grimace boner and I sucked on that for a while and I was like, all right. And then I realized I wasn't sucking on a grimace. Motor. I was sucking on a McNugget. What's crazy? It wasn't even weed. <laughs> What's crazy about and McNugget? You know that could be that's a euphemism, right? In some countries, it's a it's foreplay. It's the it's the appetizer. It's that Irish midget wrestler McNugget. <laughs> that's and this is what I love about you. You you know you're a global. You got like mass appeal. Your movies do well overseas. They do well. Uh, you know, under the sea. I know SeaWorld, you had to deal with them for a while to play your movies for the fish before they got eaten by Shamu as a little send-off of like, life ain't so bad, oh wait, num, 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 you're dead. Uh, Do you think that there's going to ever come a point where movies don't exist? I think... uh uh, you know, you know here, here's what I, uh, hey, 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 this is what I think. Because now we got Hulu and FUBU, and it's like, what's next, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I just tried to sell to FUBU. I just tried to sell to FUBU. Oh, you were part owner in FUBU, huh? I, I love the jerseys. I, uh, I, I, I love the jerseys. I, I've always loved the jerseys. Would you buy a tampon for your wife that was made from FUBU? Absolutely! Yeah, I think that was the problem with their marketing scheme is they didn't make themselves accessible enough. It was just like hoodies and, and well, you know. Reebok made tampons. So when it was so much blood, you could keep pumping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, do, I do like the <laughs> idea. <laughs> You're too quick for your own good sometimes. I do feel like that there's something to be said about where we are right now, where we're headed, and where we might go. And Vince Vaughn, you you told me in your new podcast, which I'm 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 fascinated that it took you this long to jump into the podcast world because you've always been someone that doesn't have a, a, an issue talking, and now you get to do it with just you know ads in between for for mattresses and. And pillows and bullshit, and but but is there? What's the theme of the podcast? First of all, it's a, it's called the Vaughn Effect, my man. And it, it's just about it's about me taking a friend right now and us getting over here and just picking a topic and just kind of going off it. You know just what I mean? friends bonding. It's like it's a yeah, it's a it's a V versus it's a VV guest kind of attitude. You know what I'm saying? Like Vince Vaughn versus and then whoever I bring across the table. We'll talk about anything right now. We talked about Fubu tampons last week. It was a great one and I like the energy that we both brought to the conversation. You know, it, it was actually, it was myself and it was uh, it was Robert Downey Jr. Well, that guy, that guy rules. And he rules so hard that look, there's five different guys I'd love to be if I could get a time machine. And you talk about time travel because you've You've time tra- you've t- you've time traveled. I I actually have my man. I I love time traveling. <laughs> I'm a time traveling motorboat and son of a bitch. And I, <laughs> I I like the energy of the time. I like to bring the time, and the time is relative. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, like we all wear watches, but I'm trying to watch the throne is coming out with another one. They're doing a second one with Kanye and Jay Z. This daddy can't wait for it. I'm excited. I'm excited for that album. You're a man about town. You're a man of the hour. You're a man with the plan, starring Matt LeBlanc. 
Or was it Man Without a Plan? It was Man With a Plan. It was, I think, it, it ran for a little while on CBS. And I think that, you know, that was a big deal for Matt LeBlanc because, you know, a lot of people put money on the fact that you can only be Joey from Friends. I said that. I put 90 grand on the fact that he would never work again. And, you know, I'd love to be wrong. You know, I said that Danny Bonaducci would host a daytime talk show, and I was right. Now, did I put money on that? No, because it was like I was just fucked up, and I said, I bet he'll host the show. And then he did it uh, because he had uh, connections in that world. But when you're making bets, and I know you bet on a lot of turtle races, I know you bet on, you know, you'll – You'll meet someone at a Starbucks and go, I bet that person's going to be the next president. That, that person's going to work for someone important. Daddy lost money, though. I bet on a lot of turtles. I bet that Paul Giamatti was going to be Michelangelo. It turns out that they made him Bebop <laughs> or Rocksteady, one of those guys. Uh, well, one of those. And they're, those are the lost souls, right? Bebop, Rocksteady, uh, Cash Me Outside Girl. Sure, she's living the dream. I think she has bought a fucking yacht or some shit. But... It makes me go back to an earlier point. You know, McDonald's became McDonald's because of the food, but what sustained them? The characters, right? Uh, I know that the Hamburglar, you know, is someone you've been long uh, been trying to play in a, in a TV movie because he's misunderstood. Rubble, rubble. I believe that was his catchphrase, rubble, rubble. Was the Hamburglar? I believe so, it was. You sure that wasn't Barney Rubble's catchphrase? I think he was a fan of the Flintstones. I think we all are a fan of the Flintstones, but I think he was like a Rubble Rubble kind of guy. Well, I'd love, I've been saying this for years, fuck the Tesla, fuck fuck the plug-in, okay? Get me that foot-motivated car where I can just d- truly decide when I start and stop. I have to be, you know, succumb to the man. Let me decide. I think it's going to be hard in, in San Francisco area where, the, where it's a lot of uphill battles and stuff like that. But I, I agree Well, then with it you. forces you, again, our country's so fucking fat, it forces you to get some leg strength going, make leg day a priority instead of cookie day. I, I like this. I like this idea. I, I mean, I like I like Barney Rubble. I like the whole Flintstone kind of energy, the kind of attitude. I hope that Jurassic Park is, <laughs> I hope that's real because I want to bring those dino babies back. I want to have a good time with all those guys. Too. Also, who is your favorite, who is your favorite animal in the Flintstones world, because there was like, I think there was a rhino who did the dishes. There was like a pterodactyl that like went like that, that, uh, I don't know, that fucking, he like did something to Fred's balls or something. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, that guy's name was Leonard. Fluffy or something. It was the fluff, the I Flintstones like the great fluffer. Kazoo. I like the great, the great kazoo. kazoo. What he do again? He was the alien, the little green guy. He right. would pop in from the future. I think he was right. actually from the Jetsons, but they did a lot of crossovers, which I really enjoyed. My favorite kind of guy. I like the guy that would, that would take the pictures. He would chisel, 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 and then you go, "Hey, buddy, how are you doing, my man?" You know what he'd say? "Hey, it's a living. It's a living." <laughs> he was the funny one. He was the comedic, you know, the kind of the energy. He brought that kind of energy to that fucking family. He, he, brought, he was the li- he was the comic relief, but also that's a tough gig to get. Flintstones family portrait guy. I mean. Incredible. Now, what about Bam Bam? Hey, what does this kid do for a living? He's abusive. Let's call him Bam Bam. It's adorable. You make a good point because uh, abuse in the home is no laughing matter, but the Flintstones made it okay by putting it on the kid. They said, hey, here's a kid who doesn't know any better. We're going to give him a giant nightstick that looks like a fucking turkey leg and let him just go to town beating the shit out of everyone. But and, and and he made it better by just saying what he was doing. He's like, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you right now. Bam, bam. What am I doing right now? I'm bam, bam and you. I'm bam, bam and you. No, thank you, ma'am. Just bam, bam. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Well, if he said that, maybe we would have, there been a forgiven season him, two. Yeah, a little bit of, of forgiving him a little bit, but I, he's a child. He's a child. We're teaching him bad manners is what I'm trying to say. You know what, that that, that did not take place in 2022, my man. We, that did not stand. Today, you know what he would say? Sorry, sorry. That little kid just apologizing for everything. Shit, that's deep. And, and, and it's deep, but it's also fair. And that's what I'm about. I'm about getting deep and getting fair. It's my favorite kind of porn. Well, it's the only way I do intercourse is I'm going to get in there, but I'm not going to lie about how much I'm packing. You saw it when I pulled my pants down. And I'm not saying that figuratively. I mean that as a, as a real-life thing that I said. So... Before we wrap this up, I just want to say, President Obama, thanks for starting a podcast. Thanks for 
thanks for setting the table for for presidents to come after you and to just drop the ball because you set the bar high. You, I know you get high. And where do you get your weed from? Uh, well, uh, thank you, Dr. Phil, uh, for having me on. Uh, I get my weed. Uh, Michelle's got a guy. <laughs> We've known him since Harvard. And, Not like uh, an entanglement guy, right? Like uh, a- no, sir. <laughs> no, sir, Bob. We got a, we got a guy that uh, exclusively uh, deals us the uh, danky stanky. And uh, let me be clear, when I'm on there, <laughs> I'm high as fuck. <laughs> and it feels absolutely uh, fantastic. Well, There's got to be some cool bills you probably make up when you get stoned, right? Uh, like, hey, we should pass a law where you can only get a razzmatazz at Jamba Juice. Uh, the razzmatazz is absolute gold. And I like to throw a little bit of uh, Everclear in there. And that's called an Obama. <laughs> and you know what else uh, is called an Obama? The way that you uh, look into people's eyes when you talk to them. Joe, I love Mr. Biden, but he doesn't. It, it's tough to look. It's tough to not think he's about to fall asleep. It's tough for me to engage with anyone. Trump was too much with eye contact. Joe's too little. But I do want to know this. If you were the one who who slapped Chris, Wa- Chris Rock, I think it would have been... It would have been funnier. It would have been sweeter. It wouldn't have been as effective or intimidating because hearing you scream at Chris Rock, uh, which I know you've said to anyone, I know that even like when waiters come up and they say, you know, M- Michelle Obama, can I take your order? You say, uh, uh, take my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> and they're like, I'm just doing my job. I just want to know if she wants a side salad. But you say, uh, keep uh, my wife's name uh, out of your uh, fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, and that was the last time you you uh, you went to uh, to Sizzler. And uh, we haven't been back since. <laughs> uh, that's also called an Obama when you're banned at Sizzler. <laughs> and uh, let me be clear, uh, I'm sorry uh, to the people at Sizzler, but I'm not sorry for slapping that young man because uh, he said something a little off uh, putting. And uh, I just wanted him to uh, let him know that looks delicious. Uh, how <laughs> you want some flattened a- 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 Starbucks egg bites? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, but I appreciate the offer. See, I got the not not too much eye contact, not too little. They call me the Goldilocks uh, of <laughs> eye contact. Well, that's what got Goldilocks in trouble. She looked those bears right in the fucking hoo has. And they said uh, we're gonna eat you, and they did. And let's, but let's all, you know, devil's advocate, she wanted to be eaten. You don't go there, uh, take a bear's uh, porridge, and expect that they're not going to, it's like with Statham, uh, what you said to him about the ducks. Uh, you bring bread around, this old saying from uh, in the Obama household, you bring bread around a duck, he's going to go quack quack. <laughs> this has been a, a, a pleasure-filled afternoon for me. I've, uh, all my friends came by. Uh, all eight of them. I think there might have been more than that, but uh, I'll lose touch. I, COVID, you know, uh, it's taking away my ability to eat, smell, and count, <laughs> but not get hard. I don't need Nugenics. Not, not now anyway. But I do. But I do want to meet Frank Thomas. Thanks for uh, listening, uh, and, and and I hope this helped. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you you put something into it because you don't get what you you don't you don't. And Chris Walken said it best. You don't get. Herpes if you wear a condom. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, stuff to uh, to think about and chew on, huh? Because that's what life's all about, chewing on the good stuff. Nobody said that. Maybe Denzel did. Maybe Tom Hanks did. Maybe they said it together in Philadelphia. The point is... Click subscribe right here on the ALN logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. I don't know how to blink.